So I got glitter all over my face. I miss kids and the glitter. How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Charlie Pete, as always. If you do not know me, I sell men's clothes, uh, toys, electronic, basically stuff that isn't bolted down, I sell it. So in today's video, what I'm gonna talk about is some of the stuff that I sold over the past few weeks. Because to be fair, this month has been one of the best months I've had since obviously the lockdown. Now I'm not sure what's happened or whatever, but algorithms this and the other, but all I know is some good stuff has sold, so I thought I'd share with you guys and show you some of the stuff that can make some decent money over this time. So yeah, um, not much to really talk about really, that's it. So yeah, let's just get on with it and see some of the stuff that I sold for me. If you watch to the end, I'm gonna whip out an absolute banger of a sale that I got and you'll be quite impressed with it to be fair. Like it's one of these things which you probably could see around maybe, not loads, but it's one of these brands which you see all the time, but for some reason I found the right nuances in it and it's all for a nice bit. So yeah, keep watching and you'll see an absolute cracker. So I wanted to start first off with some toys that I've picked up, some things that aren't clothing, just to kind of give you an idea of some of the stuff that I do pick up, which isn't obviously just stuff you put on you. So first up is this Galvatron transformer it's the age of extinction one so it's quite a important part of that because obviously you've got like g1s g2s and then you've got all the films they're all from different ones so this one's age of extinction galvatron obviously is quite a distinctive character in there because obviously he's one of the bad guys i had a bundle of these so i picked up like a bundle for like a fiver like lots of different transformers here and there and everywhere so i had a whole bundle which sold for about 30 pound which paid obviously for the whole box but then I managed to pick out this particular one and obviously you can see it's sold for £25. Just a really nice one again, it's just again taking the time just to part them up and have a look at each and every single one. And that's the bit which is the work really because when you sell it obviously it's good money but you've got to put the work in, you've got to separate them all, go through every single one. There must have been about 20, 25 of them which I thought I might as well bundle them but this one stuck out as a nice one to sell. Next up is this Monster High bundle. Now. I'm not wanting to like picking up Barbies and all this kind of stuff, but I do remember, I don't know, like from my toy days, I remember Monster High being one of those that everyone wanted. I think the clue for me is I had nieces, obviously I've got daughters, but my nieces who were a little bit older at the time, like a few years ago, all they wanted was Monster High stuff. So for me, it kind of stuck in my mind. So if you've got kids in your family, I'm not going to say vicinity because that's a bit pedo-ish, isn't it? But if you've got like family members who are a bit younger, just listen to the things they're talking about, like different things like toys, TV shows and stuff, because it'll give you a good idea when you're out in the shops, what stuff out there is good to look for. So I was in one of the shops local to me and basically had all these like Monster High stuff like dotted about in the shop. So I just bundled it all together, asked how much you wanted for it. And I think they wanted about £30 for it because it was quite a lot to be fair. So anyway, uh, I got all these dolls together and unfortunately a lot of them had uh, had been to the hairdresser, if that makes sense. I think a seven year old got quite creative and a lot of the hair was chopped and one of them was like properly shaved like a zero. Do you know what I mean like but anyway someone from I think it was Bulgaria messaged me like almost straight away and offered me forty pounds for it. So there was like forty pounds plus like a bit of postage, so yeah, not a bad sale. Now, you probably saw my other video where I talked about this one. But yeah, so this was a Tommy Nightlight. And I was talking about it, obviously, in the last video because they're quite rare. Because these old vintage like nightlights, they seem to sell really well. So if you ever see something, it's always worth a look. Because these nightlights were built differently back in the days. This is another one. And this is like a My Little Pony Builder Bear pony i don't know why so i got this because i noticed it had a builder bear workshop thing obviously builder bear big again like your kid wants builder bear you're going to be skinned for christmas aren't you builder bear is a very premium quality it's all about the experience i think for the kids to get to like stuff it put their own sounds in it all that kind of stuff it's all customized but yeah so this one sold for like 24.99 plus 3.99 postage can't complain Obviously, someone's going to be happy this Christmas. This is the last of the toys. This is the Animaniacs. Obviously, this is one I grew up with. We can love the Animaniacs. They're well good. These Animaniacs toys, hard to find. Things like Pinky in the Brain. I think maybe the Pigeons have got the, the I've got a bit of money on them or something like that. But mainly these ones in particular, and obviously the mice. These can go for good money. Anyway, I picked all these up for like £2.50. I love those kind of things because someone is going to be buzzing now because they found something that's... You just can't walk into a shop and find anymore. Do you know what I mean? This was like, these were like made in, what, 1995 or something like that? They're going to be hard to find. So this stuff 
have got so much value in them, whether it's sentimental, whether it's collectible, but you ain't gonna get it at a cheap price because there's just not enough in the world to be able to just say, oh, I'll just go and find one dead quick on eBay. Anything with the night with like a 90s trademark on it or something like that, give it a look and you might be surprised. Okay, so we're gonna get to clothes now. Obviously, I know this is what you all be waiting for. So first up are these Altberg Peacekeeper boots. Altbergs, they feel like your yeah, firearms boys, like they're quite um, articulated, quite light, but super, super like waterproof and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, beautiful boots, absolutely loved them. So I kind of fell into that camp quite quickly. The Altbergs like last forever, you can resole them, you can do all sorts. You can take a trip up to Richmond in Yorkshire. Is it Richmond? I think it's Richmond. Richmond in Yorkshire, getting resealed, going out for yourself a pie or something. It's just a good day out. And it's all because you've got some pair of boots which like are just fit. So again, that's the experience. These particular ones are the ones that the riot police use. It's like the ones that just get issued to them um, for like all that kind of stuff because they're just hard wearing, fire retardant, all that kind of stuff. I think I listed them at like £70, but I took a best offer like 50 quid because I could sell them for like 70, but I could be waiting around for a while. Yeah, I sold these 50 and I was pretty happy with that one. So these are tree torn Wellington boots. I'm not too, sh I don't really know too much about it, but all I noticed was I was in the shop and I saw these like bright red wellies, look quite nice, so I thought I'd have a look at them. But then I saw like the Ikea sign on them. And so I think there's like a weird collaboration of tree torn and Ikea. I can't tell you too much about them. I've not really done the research, but I looked at some of the comps, they seem to do okay. like. Some were like going for like 50, 60 pounds. So I thought I'd pick them up. They were four pounds in the shop. I don't think, again, it's one of these ones which no one even, I don't think I'll ever see them again to be fair. It's, a, it's just a really random brand, like a tree torn X Ikea kind of mix up going on. Okay, so you saw me last week picking up a pair of North Face trousers. I listed them quite quickly and they already sold within like a couple of days. If you ever see North Face walking trousers in the shops, it's definitely worth a look. Obviously, you can tell the walking trousers is made like made out of like stuff like polyester and stuff. Really light. Obviously, the lighter the hiking stuff is, the better. So you've got like the North Face hype. Like, you know, like you see road men in, in London wearing them stuff, big puffer jackets. But then you've got North Face, Yorkshire, Lancashire, going for the walk on the Pennines. So they don't really meet in the middle, to be fair. It's a bit of a weird mix. So they cater to two random, completely different uh, demographics of people so always keep an eye out for these North Face trousers so next up is this Ralph Lauren rugby shirt this polo Ralph Lauren had the nice little uh, purple pony on it it was just really nice I think I picked up for like um, a couple of quid or something like three pounds something like that anyway it sold for like 40 pound as you can see it's just a really nice style of clothing and a lot of people like wearing it nowadays so keep an eye out for rugby shirts rugby shirts tend to do really well so up next is these Barber Breeks now they look like shorts, but actually breeks. Now, here in England, I think this is one of the niches that we have, which is a little bit of an advantage over the Americans. We've got like a really random niche of people that like to go hunting, like pheasants and all that kind of stuff. But when they go, they gotta be dressed and real nice, like think like royalty when they go out shooting, all the green tweed stuff, all the, um, like these breeks and stuff, and all these shooting jackets and all that kind of stuff, flat caps, with pits, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so they went for in total 34 pound, uh, so yeah, again, it's one of the things to look out for. Shooting stuff, olive green, you're looking all country, countryfied and all that kind of stuff. It's one of them things which if you can find, you can make some really good money. I don't always pick up Fred Perry. When I see it, polo shirts, rarely pick them up. Shirts, hardly ever pick them up. Like if you ever type in Fred Perry, look at the active listings, there's thousands upon thousands of them. So when it comes to Fred Perry, you've got to niche down within the brand to see which ones can make you money and quick as well. So anyway, I found this shirt when I was out and obviously I was going through it and I saw Fred Perry, but what I noticed it says a little bit of an extra thing on there, which is reissues. Reissues is, is their repro brand within Fred Perry. Fred Perry has been around for like years, 60s, 70s, maybe a bit earlier, I'm not too sure. I think yeah, definitely 60s. So their shirts and those things, they had a particular style to them, like the older style, pointier collars, like bigger pockets, longer shirts, all this kind of stuff. It's basically, it looks exactly like one of these old uh, old shirts or old uh, jumpers, whatever it, the case may be, but it's just designed like that because I wanted to make it like the old original made in England kind of stuff. So this in particular is, I feel like the demographic which you're always trying to aim for on eBay. So the mods and the skinheads, your middle-aged people, 
people who've got like a lot of money who want to kind of relive some old days stuff like that this stuff sells so quick so this reissue one in particular i listed it for like two days and it sold again if you can see it for like 50 pounds picked up for like a fiver it's it's so it's such it's just a weird one because it's just the niche within the niche if that makes sense and that's what you need to focus on if you want to make some big bucks quite quickly is you've got to just look not just at the brand but what is it about the brand is it the style is there a particular brand within the brand and so this is a perfect example of that now remember that barber i picked up a couple of weeks ago finally sold for 64 pound nice little price obviously i bought it for 20 so it's not like an amazing flip but there's still got a bit of money in there obviously we're, we're dealing with bigger numbers so I think there's still like maybe like 30 odd pound profit in there somewhere. It's getting to that time again. It's getting to that time where it's getting a bit colder. So people are wanting some really nice jumpers. This was like a really nice thick fisherman kind of look to it. Really nice. Anyway, can't really say too much about it. I talked about it all the time before on that other video. Barber always does well, but this particular things like the coats and the jumpers, some of the trousers, obviously those breeks. There's just different things that sell within Barber. But either way, we did well with this one. Paul Smith's one of those ones, I don't pick up everything, but when I see particular styles, I like to pick them up. So this one in particular was a, kind of like a chore kind of shirt, and it's got like the double breasted pockets. It's It looked more like a utility style rather than just like a plain shirt. It was a little bit thicker than a normal shirt as well, so I thought I'd give this one a go. I picked this one up for like, I think it was like three or four quid, and as you can see, it went for like 30 pound. Now here's one which I found really interesting. I don't know how to explain this one. Again, this is a chore jacket. It's a nice blazer, but it's a Harris tweed one. And if you look at the pattern, how sick is that? Proper tweed check pattern. But it seemed a bit like, I don't know what the word is. Is it like a kind of like punk kind of look to it? Like the logo in the back, although it's like a country jacket, it was like a big pink print of a Harris tweed in the back of the jacket on the inside. So it's really, it's like just really different. It was slightly longer than a blazer, just a really nice piece. And I got this for really cheap from wholesale and I sold it for 54 pound. So again, you can see the potential of some Harris tweed. A lot of it, again, it's, if you type in Harris tweed again on eBay, you, you'll find loads of it. So again, you have to find stuff that sticks out. I'm telling you the theme again here. You just gotta find stuff that is slightly different and what people are looking for. So, this was a wholesale buy. It's actually the same time I picked up those Adidas shorts, which I kind of talked about before. Obviously, you saw those ones, they were for a really good price. And I mentioned this particular item as well. So this bag, absolute beaut. Like, I ain't seen anything like it. It had the leather straps, the nice Patrick detail. But I saw one in particular on eBay, and it was listed, and in fact, it sold for about 400 pound. So I thought, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just list that 400 pound and I left it. So I've left it for about three months or something like that, maybe a little bit longer. Anyway, I was, um, what was I doing? I was going to Lidl to go pick up one of those ultimate brownies. You know those beaut ones? Oh, it's fit. Anyway, as I was going in, I heard a little ding, looked down and there was an offer for 275 pound for this bag. And obviously I accepted it, it's going to London. And so I said to myself, you know what? I'm gonna get myself two brownies. I deserve it. When you see an opportunity, this is what I always think with this kind of stuff. This bag could have easily sold for £40, £50, £60, £70 quite quickly. But when you see an opportunity, you've got to snap it up. So I had all this other stuff I can sell for like normal prices. So this is for me, it's like a bit of a home runner. So listed at £400, left it, just forget about it. I've got a few items like that in my store, which I just set it at a big price and forget about it because I know if it even gets close to that figure, I'm gonna snatch it off. So thanks for watching. If you found this useful, obviously please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Maybe next week I might go out. Maybe next week you might find me in here just talking about random stuff. But again, I'm grateful for you guys watching these things. I ramble all the time and I go on myself, but it seems to be helping some of you guys out. So yeah, as always, I appreciate it and we'll see you next time. So take care and have a good week.